man right here, M sister, you grew up in church? What kind of church? What denomination? Baptist. Did your mother take you to church? Who took you to church? I walked by myself. Okay, but when you was a kid, you went to church. Who took you? Who introduced you to church? Your family? I don't know. I just kind of. You just saw me go. My mother just told me go to church. Now, where does the Baptist church come from? What's the origin of the Baptist church? Can I tell you? Slavery. A slave master came up with that. Where's that? Where's that picture? Hey, Aria, put the picture of the different denominations. What do y'all put it up? Every denomination of, of Christianity comes from the slave master. Whether it's Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Catholic, Methodist, Pentecost, it all comes from a slave master system. So, do you feel that we should follow it? Because we got it in slavery, right? So should we follow it? Let me ask you another question. The Southern Baptist Church, it was Southern Baptist before it was a Baptist. Were they, were black people allowed to have high positions in the Southern Baptist Church? Yes or no? Sit. Oh, up until the 90s, sister, you wasn't allowed to have a prominent position in, in the Southern Baptist Church. And that's what you're following, you understand? You're following white supremacy. That's white supremacy. Was this in your church growing up? See the demon right here? Yeah, you said yes, that was in your church. But what does the Bible say about that guy? About Jesus Christ? What does the Bible say about Jesus Christ? Okay, so I want you to, now, you was going to church, I want to, you, you, see the, you see the difference now, right? Here it is a sister, she's been in Christianity all her life. We're telling her that the Bible was not, is not Christianity. Now, she said this is in her church when you're growing up, right sister? Now, let's see what does the Bible say Jesus Christ looked like. And if we're going to see this, or is it more like this? Read. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. So, Christ, let's talk about Jesus Christ, Revelations. So, Christ had white hair and it was woolly. Is that white and woolly, or is that white and woolly? Which one? I never thought he looked like no, that. No, 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 but I didn't, I, mm, mm, mm. Because this is in your church. If you didn't think he looked like that, and that's what you follow, then you're already admitting your church is a lie. Right. You understand? Yes. So, white and woolly is this right here. Like us, we got woolly here, right? Go ahead. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, fully gray, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. When black people drink wine, what happens to the whites of our eyes? They turn red. So we're describing a black man already. So wait a minute, why does this, why was this in your church growing up, sis? Why do you think that was in your church? Why did they change the image? We're not even done reading it, but why did they change it? Why do you think they changed it? Okay, we're gonna get that too, go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass, sister? A goldish color, or like a brownish color maybe? Brownish, right? Go ahead. Like, like the sister's complexion right here. Both of y'all complexion. Your brass, your skin is the color of brass. Read. <laughs> As if they burn in a furnace. So sister, if I take that brass and I burn it in a furnace, now what color is it going to become? So, sis, what color? Is it darker or is it lighter than that brass? It's darker. So Christ was a dark skinned black man. You understand that? But growing up, sister, look at look at what the Baptist had you believe in. Give me that now. Where's the who, who created the Baptist? Ah, oh, look, here you go. I got it. John Smith. Get that on the camera, bro. This who is this slave master created your religion, Christianity. Your Baptist religion. There you go. The damn devil on earth. So when you're singing songs, you're praying in that church, you're looking at all the stained glass, oh, it's so beautiful. You're living a lie. That's right. It's a lie. Church on Sunday is a lie. Bring it church up. on Sunday is white supremacy. See, look at that, sister. And, and how long, how, what age, how, how long have you been in that Baptist religion? For, what, 30 years, something like that? Longer? So, so you see, whole life. <laughs> your whole life. Now, sis, I want you to. Now, I know it's hard. It's hard to hear you've been lied to. But look at how they deceived you, sis. You've been out here for what, 10 minutes? And you find out something you never knew in 30, 40, 50 years. 
We just told you our Bible system. So why did the Baptists change it? Because they you know they that they use that to keep you guys out. You know what you did? You know how our mothers did? They carried their sons to church to go get indoctrinated by this devil. Right. Nigga, get your ass up and go to Sunday school. You going? We learned this in Sunday school. We learned this in church. Our mothers forced us to learn this demon right here. That's right. Did you take your, your children to church? See, I know I'm not lying. I know what it is. So you get the indoctrination and then you pass it on to who? Your children. Y'all did Christmas in church. Y'all did Easter in church. Y'all did New Year's in church. Birthdays. Halloween. Am I right? I'm not lying. I know what I know what I'm talking about. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Where is that? Um, is that it? You know what I'm looking for? About the devils? Yeah. Eat off the same plate? I want y'all to hear something. So is it making sense to you? You see the difference now? We never got God's will. We got white man Jesus, Christianity. Because we could not read in slavery. You know that, right, sister? So what did we get in slavery? Did we get the Bible? No. We got slaves obey your master. We got John 3.16 means, means you got to love everybody. You got to forgive me for every evil I've ever done to your people. You got to forgive me. Turn it, You got to turn the other cheek in slavery. You got to love your enemies in slavery. Right. You know what the white man did, sister? I'll get a few. I'll get a few. You know, you know what the white man did with this book in slavery, sister? He took little verses and mis miseducated you with those verses. Right. Read it. First Corinthians 10, 21. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye Read it. Wait, sister, you hear that? Listen to this. Yes. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord. You can't drink the cup of the Lord. And the cup of devils. You can't drink the same two cups. You can't drink. You can't say, oh, I'm righteous. And then you're going to be wicked too. You got to be one or the other. Right. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. You can't be partakers of the Lord's table. And the table of devils. You So you can't do Christmas. You can't do New Year's. You know, I bet you in your spirit, you know that that's pagan, don't you? You know that stuff is pagan. But does the Baptist care that it's pagan? Put the camera on her, man. Does the Baptist know that it's pagan? Does, do they care? They don't care. So they teach, sister, they teach us how to break God's laws. That's what your religion did. It taught you to break God's laws. Do you know, do you know a lot of songs in the hip book? For Baptists? Not anymore. Huh? Not anymore. No. Not anymore. But when you was when you was heavy in it, you did though, didn't you? Uh probably. Yes, sister. This little loud of mine. That's right. Keep reading. Ye, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So sis, how do we get out of the situation we're in? Because we've been in Baptist religion for 400 years. We've been in Methodists. We've been Muslims. We've been comedic science. We've been, uh, we tried uh, Black Rev Black Panthers, remember Black Panthers? We tried Marcus Garvey's way. What's the solution to get us out of this situation? Do you have a solution? Oh, uh, people don't have a solution. Guess what? Baptist was given to us to keep us docile. Right. Christianity and this devil was given to us to keep us on the bottom. Because guess what? You have a son? Let's say, hypothetically speaking, your son was shot down and killed by the cops. You go to the press conference without shots behind you. More than likely, when the when the um when the reporter asks you, hey, do you forgive the man that shot your son? What you gonna say? With that Baptist, with this devil in your mind, what you gonna say? Huh? You see how you struggling? With this, you would have to forgive him. Ex exactly. So now, whenever we read it, whenever we see it on TV and a black woman forgives the devil for killing her son, what does she say? Oh, I, I, I forgive him. Yeah, I, I forgive him. I, it's okay. I, I'll be okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trust in the Lord. Garbage, sister. The Bible don't teach that. The Bible don't teach you to forgive your enemy. The enemy is talking about is your own people. Give me it. Yes, right. Matthew's five and forty-three. Because that's what you said, right? Love your enemies, right? That's what the Bible says. The Bible does say love your enemy. Which enemy you think is talking about? Think it's talking about the white man? Yeah? Why? Because of what you've been taught. Okay. 
read. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. You know? Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and, and hate thine enemy. So that's what he's been saying in the Old Testament. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Okay. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Do what? Love your enemy. Do what? Love your enemy. Uh-huh. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Uh-huh. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Exodus 23. So it says, pray for them that despitefully use you, bless you. Now, that scripture right there. Did you hear that in the Baptist church? I know you did. I knew it. I knew you did. You learn how to be, how to forgive white folks of every evil that they ever did. But do we ever apply that scripture with each other? Did the Baptist religion teach you to apply that to your own people? Or did they teach you to apply it to white folks? Apply it to everyone. To everyone? Okay. Well, let's take a look at your sons. Do they forgive each other when they shoot each other down? Do, or do they retaliate and blast back? So no, our, our mothers never taught us to keep that law with each other, but we teach it to keep it with white folks. That's why white folks can kill us, they shoot us down, and when we say, oh, I forgive them, just, just, let's just march. Let's march and beg. No justice, no peace. Please treat me like a human being. The civil rights movement, that's what, that's what Negroes did, march. That's all they did, march. That's all they know, march. When a, when a nigga gets shot down, oh, let's go march. But if they shoot each other down, what's gonna happen? They coming back, guns blazing. That's right. Read. Exodus chapter 23 and verse four. So now we're gonna read about something. So we just better love your enemies. Let's see what that's talking about. If thou meet thine enemy's ox. Thine enemy's ox, here go, sister. Listen close, sister, 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 Jay. Jay, this is for you, because you, you asked about love your enemy. I want you to hear this. Read, read it again. If thou meet thine enemy's ox. So it's talking about your enemy, right? Or his ass going astray. His ass going astray. Thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. So the scripture says, if you see your enemy's possession going astray, you can't steal it. You go and get it and bring it back to him. Okay, go ahead. If thou see the ass of him, the head of thee lying. If you see the possession of the person that, the brother or sister that hates you, Lying under his burden, uh -huh. and what is forbear to help him, and you don't help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt surely help with him. So now, here go what type of enemy? It says, help your enemy. Don't leave his ass laying under his burden. You gotta help it, right? Go ahead. Is that it? Yeah. Go to verse 24. Verse 24. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 24. Where's 24? Oh, yeah, 23. 23. For mine angel shall go for 22. 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. So now it says, if you indeed obey God's voice. And do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Wait a minute. It says, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. Let's see what that's talking about. Because I'm, I'm confused now. It just said, help your enemy, right? We read help your enemy, right? Yes. Now it says, if you do what I say, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. Let's see what that's talking about. And an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites. I'm going to bring you to the Amorites. That's Africans, real Africans, which you are not. And the Hittites. Africans. And the Perizzites. Africans and the Canaanites, Africans and the Hivites uh -huh. and the Jebusites, uh -huh. and I will cut them off. I'm gonna do what with these enemies? And I will cut them off. So wait a minute, this two, I'm confused here. It said in one verse, it said help your enemies. Now it's saying I'm gonna, if you do what I say, I'm gonna cut those enemies off. Go back to verse three, verse four. Is it verse three or verse four? Verse four. Verse four. So now here's the, here's the point. The enemy in verse four is the enemy of your own people. The brother or sister you have a problem with, that's who you're supposed to love. The enemy we just read about in verse 24 is what? The other nations. You understand? Church don't teach you that. Did you learn something new today? You see that? But in 40 years, the Baptist never told you that. Give me first, first Samuel 18, 29. Let's get a little bit more about that enemy. Let's get a little more. So does that make sense to you? Because guess what? We have problems with each other every day. We're killing each other every day. If we applied love your neighbor as yourself, what would the murder rate be? Huh? It would be lower. 
how long? Because the law says thou shalt not kill. So what would the murder rate be if we actually applied it? Do you have a better solution than that? Thank you, sister. That, now that's honest. So we gotta come back to what God said to be, not how we feel or think. Because we feel what we feel we what we think is fleshly emotion. We gotta squash our emotions and come back to what the word says. That's right. You understand that, sister? Read. Verse 7, chapter 18, and verse 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. So now we read about King Saul. Remember King Saul, right? You read about King Saul. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, right? Read. And Saul became David's enemy continually. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm confused. Here's your enemy now. Saul became David's enemy. Saul was from Benjamin. David was from Judah. They the same damn nation. But they're the same people. So what is it saying? Your own brother can become your enemy now. Now go back to Matthew 5.43. Matthew 5.43. So guess what? If we applied the scripture with each other, we would have no issues. I wouldn't worry about a brother putting, putting out a gun trying to put me to death. You understand? I wouldn't worry about a brother trying to sleep with my woman. I wouldn't worry about a brother trying to molest my child. I wouldn't have to worry about that. But because niggas are evil and wicked, guess what? We gotta worry about that thing. Read. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Do what? Love your enemies. The enemy of your own people. Because we read earlier that we're going to put the other nations in slavery. Those are your enemies. Your oppressors are going into slavery. This ain't the same enemy we're talking about here. This is the enemy of the unrepentant, your own brothers and sisters. You want to say that, miss? Okay, good. Bless them that curse you. Bless your own people that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to your brothers and sisters that hate you. This is doing good right here. Teaching our people repentance. Okay. And pray for them. Do what? And pray for them. So what are we doing? We're praying you repent and get your mind right. Our sister should not be pregnant at 17 years old. Bring it out. With no marriage, no man. Yes, your parent failed. Whoever your parent is, they failed. Bring they failed, they failed, they failed. That's right. They failed. 17 years old and pregnant. That's what we do. Read. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is that in what? heaven. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. So now, when we apply this, this shows us that we are the children of God. Yes, right. Romans 12:24. last script. Let's see what the point is of that. Yo. And then, give me two more scripts, one more script after that. I got something for you, for your, you and your sister, what she should have applied. Read. Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. Be not overcome of evil. Do what? Be not overcome of evil. But do what? But overcome evil with good. See that, sister? So you can't, if, if a brother or sister is doing something evil towards you, you cannot retaliate against them. Right. We retaliate every day, killing each other and sleep with each other's women out here. The Bible says don't retaliate against them. Jump up to verse 17. Yeah. Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. See that, sister? Recompense to no man evil for evil. So if a brother is evil, your job is not to do evil to him. Read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. Read. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Do what? Avenge not yourselves. Do what? Avenge not yourselves. So once again, if this is proof that we're brainwashed because we avenge ourselves all the time. Right. Niggas sleep with my woman, guess what? I'm coming back blazing. Just last week, we was in Greenwood, Mississippi. Right. We were doing the same thing in Greenwood, Mississippi. You know what they did? They laughed at us. They threatened to kill us. Guess what happened the very next day? God said, judgment to Greenwood, Mississippi. That's right. God said, judgment and put one of them to death. Bring it out. You know what they was all saying on their Facebook? Oh, let's pray. Oh, I can't believe they, I can't believe Todd did that. I can't believe he shot my brother. The brother got shot 20 times in front of his sister. That's right. You understand that? Right in front. His sister was begging him, stop shooting my brother. He was like just popping him. Bomb, 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 bomb. Your own brother did that. 
but we the, we the dumb tongue. Give me uh, Matthew's uh, 5, 5 and 16. Because I want to get you something about what you said about your sister or why you don't believe, because you're absolutely correct. Our people that claim they're Israelites, they go back with their family and act like niggas. You understand that? When they're supposed to show our people a better example. Watch right. this. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men. See that, sister? The scripture says, let your light shine. Let God's laws, which is the light, shine before men. That's what your sister should have been showing you. She should have been showing you a righteous example of what it means to follow the Bible. That's what she should have shown you. Read it again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your... That what? That they may see... See that, sis? That you may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See the job of your sister? That was what your sister was supposed to do. So now you see her example. You say, you know what? I'm going to go to that school to see what they talking about. What are they teaching my sister why she changed? But from what you said, your sister never changed. She was supposed to convert what? Her mind. She never did. She never did. Your sister never did, man. So our people, they, 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 they talk crap on their face. Oh, I'm righteous. I got God's laws. I got this. I got that. But then the people that know them best, what do they do? They never changed. They still act like niggas. Yes. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.